Kilroy back at the shop. Um, we're going to do a little work on the pacemaker today. We're going to actually spend some time um, working on getting the pacemaker fixed. Ugh, got a cramp all of a sudden. Not good. And um, anyway, uh, getting everything cleaned up after getting rid of that totally fragged air compressor. Uh, back from Thanksgiving, eating way too much, and um, but it was good. And um, so let's get the camera over and uh, to the pacemaker, and let's get to work. Okay, guys, we're back on the pacemaker here. Um, so, you know, the counter gear in here, this is all covered up. I've got this all taped off and covered right at the moment. To get this gear out, I looked around, looked around, looked around for manuals, for service manuals that talk about how to tear one of these things down, how to work on these, never found one. All sorts of manuals on how to use one. There's military manuals, or U.S. Army manuals, um, uh, old pacemaker literature all over the net. But if anybody has actually seen a manual on how to actually tear one of these things down, I'd like for you to let me know. Anyway, uh, so when I got to looking at this, I figured, okay, the way this is going to come out is I'm going to have to take this, this plate off here. There's a plate here with fasteners in it. And some of these were obviously hodgepodge, these fasteners here. Um, but there was so much paint on here. There was, the paint was so thick that I couldn't even see there's, there's, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, one, two, three, four, five uh, socket head cap screws that are, that are counterboard into this plate. I couldn't even see those. I didn't even know those were there. I mean, I, 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 they, it was, they were not visible because there was so much paint on here. Here's one. Here's another here. Here's another here another here so I had to spend about <clears throat> well a couple of days doing it a little bit at a time stripping the paint off of this to get down to where I could actually see and then the good news is this plates actually split right here there's actually a, a split line let me try to move the camera in a little closer I think that's pretty visible right here Here's a split line. So I don't have to take the retaining plate. This retaining plate here actually holds in the spindle bearings. And I just didn't want to mess with this. I didn't want to mess with the spindle at all. So we're going to take this off right now. And you are going to get to experience the ups and downs, the ins and outs of learning about this stuff on the fly uh, while it happens. So let me get some tools together and then we're going to take this this attempt to take this plate off. Alrighty. I'm really making a concerted effort here to try not to get gunk up inside the headstock, so Let's get started. Um, these fasteners here are obviously not original. Either somebody has lost them or they broke the counter bore out. Well, the counter bore appears to be fine. Ready? Yeah. 
So far so good. Well, oh, there we go. And battery. Let me get a fresh battery. Well, I didn't have a fresh battery, so we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. That's the last of the bolts. I think there's a hole right here, but it's a threaded, tapped and threaded hole that uh, I don't believe goes through. It doesn't. So let's see if we can bump this off. It's loose, there's no doubt about that. Hmm. Gasket letting free. Well, there you go. Uh, here's the back side of the casting. Caster number 300-155. I'm going to have to remake this gasket. Set this to the side. Okay, we've got bearing retainers. Um, with Dutch key locks. And they're marked. There's a mark. There's a pin mark right here. And there's a mark of five and a five here and uh, then there's another this one's seeping a little bit I'm, I don't think I have to take that one out so um, there's a pin mark there and there's a mark six and six and there's a keyed in set screw here. There's a keyed in set screw here. So it looks like this particular bearing retainer, this is the one we've got to get at here. I'm going to peel back my my dust guard a little bit, yeah, that's the one. The shaft right here, I'll bring the camera up here and uh, we can look down in here. The shaft, it's a keyed shaft that this gear slides on and it goes into a bearing that's retained right here. Pretty big bearing. So let me get some more light and then I'm going to get you a view in here. And then uh, we're probably going to have to make us a spanner to um, to go across this this here. I don't have a I don't think I have a adjustable spanner that goes that wide. We're going to look. All right, before we take this out of here, we're going to. All this down. Let 
with some lacquer thinner. Get the oily residue off. I'm going to mark this. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and get this key out. Okay. What I want to do is first I'll just see if this moves. It does not. When we take this out, let me photo do a little photo documentation here. We take this out, I'm gonna count the turns as we as we unscrew this retainer so that when we go back in we can go back in the same amount of time we're also going to be very careful to catch any shims uh, that might be behind this any other paraphernalia used in retaining that bearing all right adjustable pin spanner and the pins are not big enough but i just thought i'd give it a shot that baby is not moving. <clears throat> oh boy. This is going to be fun. Well, it looks like we're going to have to make us a, a spanner wrench here. Um, <clears throat> a quarter inch bolt quality quarter inch bolt is a real good fit in these pinholes and um, a little measuring uh, shows that our center to center distance on these holes is three and seven sixteenths inches yeah that's nice isn't it they couldn't have just made it say three and a half or something you know no had to be three and seven sixteenths so all right I made a little spanner out of a piece of DIN rail, steel DIN rail, and a couple of quarter inch socketed cap screws. Just adjusted the bolts in the slots, tightened them down, and there you go. It is in the, um, it is in there. Now we are going to attempt. to back this baby on out. That's not moving, and that's with a little assistance on the end of that piece of DIN rail. Not moving at all. Alrighty, guys and gals, move the camera up a little closer. I actually managed to get this to move. I've been spraying it down with uh, some Pro Tools. MP penetrant for a couple of hours spraying it and leaving it spraying it and leaving it and then I got the um, my homemade spanner in here and it started turning so what we're gonna do is we're gonna count the turns that this thing is in here Uh, 
That's one full turn right there. One and a half. Two full turns. Two and a half. I don't think I need this anymore. Get that ring off. Three turns. Three and a half, four turns. Okay, about four turns. There's the retaining, the bearing retainer. Let me move the camera in a little closer. Alrighty, there's the bearing. Let's see the numbers. Uh, got a number two twenty five USA. See if any of this comes out of here. I'm just sliding the gear over. I think this is a removable race. Yep. Let me see if the end of this here shaft, it is not threaded. No, I think it is threaded. Let me figure out what kind of bolt goes in this thing. Well, I don't know. I have not had any luck getting this bearing out. The idea of the shaft is threaded. Let me uh, show you what I did find, however. I believe I found the oil pump. And it's driven over here through this shaft. See that split pin there? See if you can see that. And um, there's the back side of the bearing. And... Uh, so there we go. A little closer to getting it out. The bearing says Bower or Bower, B O W E R. And then the number on it is a 225. That is the bearing. So I don't think that 
Um, it may be that the OD of this bearing retainer is threaded to go in this bore. I can't really tell. Um, if so, there's no way to grab it to turn it. Um, that bearing is about ooh, about that thick, right? So that's a that's a big bearing there, big tapered roller bearing. Um, so it hasn't just popped out. So I'm going to do a little more digging and looking at the plans. Okay, well, that's where we are. Um, got the got that bearing retaining plate off. Uh, got the bearing retainer out. Um, got to look at the bearing. Need a little more. Got to do a little more digging to find out how that that's going to come out. How how that works. Um, if anybody has any firsthand knowledge, feel free to share or uh, documentation. You would be my hero. Um, so. Let's uh, move on from there. So um, the other day, uh, a guy fairly local to me about um, a couple hours here east of me uh, had uh, advertised some machinery for sale. So I went over and checked out the shop, got some stills of the, um, of the machines that were there, big old uh, Conehead Lodge of Shipley Big. I do not know how he's going to get that thing out of there. And um, then uh, uh, there was a European lathe or make I didn't uh, didn't uh, know. Uh, both of them were too long for me to do anything with. The lock and ship that was probably, you know, 20 feet between centers. And uh, both of them were too long. Then there was, a, uh, there, was a couple, there was a little mill, drill press and stuff like that. Guy had purchased the whole shop. Uh, in a lot by supposedly the owner of the shop had passed on uh, on site and uh, went to the big shop in the sky so uh, anyway I didn't make any purchases there but I thought I'd share the pictures with you so uh, I will roll the pics on the way out so enjoy